Hi, Karen here. How are you today? Well, I'm sitting here, have been sitting here for the last 45 minutes, about 50 minutes now waiting for someone to show up for a show and they haven't shown up. I was going to actually speak with Bill Bennett today about his latest documentary, Facing Fear. I spoke with Bill in 2018 about his documentary called PGS, Intuition is Your Personal Guidance System. Loved that documentary and went to the premiere of Facing Fear just up the road from my place recently at the Randwick Cinema here in Sydney and watched his latest documentary and uh, and loved it. Uh, I had a couple of criticisms about it, which I was going to discuss with Bill today. You know, not criticism, just opinions about it, because Bill is a filmmaker. He was a journalist for years and um, started making documentaries, uh, had a spiritual awakening, started making conscious documentaries, spiritual documentaries, and wants to stay behind the camera. But he injected his story into the into the documentary, which I thought was great because it really personalizes the um the, the documentary, you know, when there's a lot of talking heads, like a lot of people that you're interviewing. So you're just seeing people sit there and, you know, talk. I call that talking heads as I am right now. I'm a talking head. It can get a little dull, but when you've got someone's story threaded through and um, and you get an emotional response to their story, I find that that, um, that makes for a better documentary. And that's what he's done. <laughs> that's what he's done. But he could have done that a little bit more, I felt. But facing fear, it's an important subject, isn't it? And something that we have all been facing, especially over the last few years, it's been amplified. So after Bill's uh, first documentary, Intuition, which is something that I'm passionate about, uh, Intuition is your personal guidance system, our emotions, something that I teach as a teacher of deliberate creation, he said to me, I'm going to make a documentary about fear. And I thought, hmm interesting choice after you've made a documentary about psychic ability and intuition. I thought, I wonder why he's going to make a documentary about fear, guided as he was. And then we had uh, the events of the last three years happening and a lot of people went into fear. And I thought, well, Bill, good call, good call to make a documentary about facing fear. And it's a beautiful documentary with a very important message. And I wanted to use this time to talk about how we all face fear. Plug fell out. And how you face fear. How do you face your fears? Because fear, there's a few acronyms for fear, isn't there? False evidence appearing real or feeling alive or energized and ready. How does it go? Um, anyway, there's a couple of ac acronyms for fear, but it's something that we all live with. I remember when I spoke to Scarlett Lewis about the senseless murder of her five-year-old in a school shooting in uh, in the States a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, probably about 10. But uh, I spoke to her not quite 10 years ago. Anyway, I'm getting into details. And she said something really fascinating, that after 25 years of showcasing New World teachers and experiences, I had not heard before. She said that her greatest fear was realised. And when she realized her greatest fear, which was that of a mother, the senseless murder of her beautiful child, you know, an innocent, helpless five-year-old, um, that all her other fears faded away, dropped away, just dropped away because her biggest fear was realized. And um, in the realization that she no longer had any fear, she fell out of depression and into a state of grace. And for about eight months, she was in the state of grace and she got a lot of work done. She realized that the shooter, who was a child that went to the school, grew up, didn't know how to process his negative emotions and they amplified and momentum built and his anger and fear grew and he went back to the school and shot about 20 students and teachers, that if somebody had taught him how to process his negative emotions and what that meant, that maybe that wouldn't have happened. And so she implemented a program called the Enrichment Program. It might be called something different now. It's been a few years since I spoke to her. And, um, and, implement, and is putting that into schools across the world. I think thousands of schools are now implementing this program, teaching kids about their emotions and how to process their emotions and their fear. And she also said something really interesting. She said that 
she had almost uh, an in-body life review when she sort of realized that she was no longer fearing anything anymore because her greatest fear had been realized. And she looked back at her life and she saw that pretty much every thought she'd ever had was rooted in some kind of worry or fear. And it was enlightening to her how often she was in fear. And I think that that's the mainstream condition for most people. We don't always recognize fear as fear. What do you think of me? Am I good enough? Am I running late? I don't want to upset you. Uh, I don't want to be late because, you know, I don't want to upset you. Then what do you think? Because there is this underlying subconscious programming that happens to us on an ongoing basis on billboards on television ads on internet ads that is constantly perpetuating this rumbling of fear that we is like most of our default setting and you know like for women uh, you know, like, are you thin enough? Are you fit enough? Are you pretty enough? Uh, wear this makeup, buy this face cream. It's it's actually all based in fear when you look at it. And I think that recognizing the fears that we have allows us to be able to deal with them. But many of us don't even recognize it. And so when Scarlett said that when she had looked back on her life and she saw that most of her thoughts were based in fear, there was that moment of awareness that I think all of us could use to be aware of what we're believing to be true because much of it is such deep programming it's like a default setting we just naturally go there we just go there even discounting like when we go to the supermarket and look for the cheapest thing because this is something I like to do all the time I was working with my fear around money for so long and um, feeling lack, feeling that lack and and not enoughness, that I would always buy everything that was on sale. But that is just deep rooted fear. And then I would challenge myself to go to the supermarket and try not to look at the price of something and just buy it because I wanted it and not because it was on sale. And like working with my fear in those ways. So there are big fears and there are little fears, but those little fears that run us they culminate, don't they? They culminate into bigger fears. And so when we hit pressure, when life squeezes us, you know, when circumstances happen, things don't go right, we get sick, people die. When there's this pressure cooker of life that where the things that we want to happen don't happen, all that combination of little fears, those underlying default settings, they amplify and culminate and turn into panic and and bigger fears and worry and anxiety and not enoughness and depression it all culminates isn't it so one of the best ways to face fear is to first be aware of what we're believing to be true about ourselves about this life about our place in this life about our power if we see something we don't like we don't want whether it's personally or globally like maybe I have an illness I don't want or there's something in the world I don't want can we feel empowered to transform it to change it to accept it to not be afraid of it to not be victimized by it to not be snowed under by the pressure of this event or this, these circumstances in our life and I think that when we are aware of the beliefs that that run us, those fearful underlying subconscious beliefs, then we have, we take back our power because ultimately it's only what we believe that creates our life because life is going to happen, isn't it? Life is just going to happen. There's the, you know, the contrast, the dramas in life are, are going to happen, but how do we meet them? How do we meet the challenges of life? Do we meet them? with acceptance and knowing that if this isn't happening now it'll happen later or I can make a change and things will you know go my way later or do we hit it with um, oh everything goes wrong and nothing's going right and I'm not good enough and I can't get what I want and life sucks and <laughs> life's a bitch and then you die it's one of the sayings life's a bitch and then you die because all that is just those underlying fears coming to the surface aren't they 
instead of um, that love and power of who we are as infinite creative potential and the contrasts of life, the challenges of life, we can meet them with excitement and knowing that if things aren't going right, then something else is coming along that might be even better than what we planned. So as I sit here today, um, talking to you <laughs> because somebody hasn't shown up for the show, I'm turning that into, I was just having a chat with a girlfriend. I said, oh, it'd be easy just to go back to bed and pull the sheets over my head when things don't go right. But no, I can turn that into a conversation with you and talking about what I know about fear. And I can get things done that I couldn't have got done had I done the show. And I can turn this situation into something that's working for me instead of being victimized by it. So also, as we sit here today, we've got an event running this weekend, a couple of days away, and we haven't sold the tickets to cover the rent. We've rescheduled it. We're going to hold it at my place. You know, like when challenges hit, when everything goes wrong, then we've got to like navigate the challenges, haven't we? The changes. And we're going to turn it into an intimate event of manifestation and music at my place. Probably only about half a dozen people might turn up, which is lovely. Plus the people who are speaking, me and, and some musician friends of mine, beautiful musician friends of mine, singers and musicians. And it'll just be a lovely intimate event at my place instead of the 50 people at a big event in a big venue that we had planned. And we're going to reschedule the big event for later in the year, like not in the year, late, later next year. Because here we are in December already and there's lots happening, you know, in December in Australia, it's summer and uh, Christmas is coming up and holidays and everyone's like putting on events and seeing family and going away and all that sort of stuff happens. So... When life doesn't go according to plan, can we meet it with joy and anticipation for good times? Or do we meet it with, oh, no, everything goes wrong, life sucks? Because ultimately how we respond and react to life is really an indication of what we're believing to be true, that subconscious programming, which has been based in fear. So can you look at your fears? Can you embrace your fears? Can you love your fears for showing you what you believe to be true about yourself and others and life? Because awareness of what you believe and who you believe that you are is one of the most potent, powerful things you'll have in creating the life you want and being a genius, deliberate creator of your reality, here to affect the transformation of the subconscious programming, collective programming of this world as we move out of fear and into love, out of separate consciousness and feeling separated from what we want and separate from love and separate from each other and separate from God into unity consciousness, which is collaboration, cooperation and unity and ultimately love, joy and bliss. It's a fun ride, this life, this beautiful life, this beautiful physical life. And fear is all part of the ride. In fact, as humans, we look for it. We watch horror movies. We go to theme parks that have rides that make us so fearful we vomit. <laughs> it's something about fear that we're fascinated with, isn't there? So can we embrace the fears of this world, including our own, and use them to learn from and uh, enjoy it enjoy it enjoy the fear just like when we go on a uh, some sort of ride at a theme park you know those rides that they go up and then they fall and then stop and you feel like you're free falling you're gonna die and then it stops and then you feel like your stomach is up in your mouth and you want to vomit and then you go you get off the ride and you go oh my god that was so much fun let me do it again what is it about fear that we enjoy so much? We watch all these movies where people are murdering each other and chasing each other and suspense and fear, 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 fear. Our world is marinating in fear, isn't it? But, you know, overcoming fear is embracing fear, isn't it? It's embracing the ride of life and all that it offers and knowing that every emotion is guidance and and when we're feeling stressed or worried or anxious, that is an indication that we're believing a truth that isn't our truth, isn't the truth of who we are as infinite 
deliberate creators, infinite genius, creative potential. We are an extension of the creator. We are the creators of our world. We are the creators of what we believe, how we think and how we feel. And fear is an indication that uh, there is a belief running, a program running. It's active in our vibration and it's pointing to it. It's a very clear indication of what we're believing to be true. So embrace your fears and hopefully we'll get Bill on another time to talk about his fabulous documentary, Facing Fear, and his own personal story. And we'll have a beautiful, enlightened conversation with Bill. So thanks for listening and watching. I also wanted to say next year I'm going to be running some deliberate creation, weekly deliberate creation conversations. Um, I'll make them pretty inexpensive because I feel that the information of who we are as deliberate creators is so important there's many teachers out there you know teaching it that esther hicks uh, the joe dispensers you know paul selegs there's many people spiritual teachers out there but it's something that i feel that as i speak to my group and i teach psychic awareness and meet your spirit guides and all these online courses that i've got offering it's always included in everything i teach because it doesn't matter what we want, whether we want to be psychic or help the world or save the planet or find a girlfriend, boyfriend, get money, get healthy. We are creating it through these principles, through the 101 principles of deliberate creation, using your emotions as your guidance system and how you can navigate and flow your energy into this realm, into this world, so that you it benefits yourself and others. So I'm going to run them on a weekly basis. Pop in. You can pop in, pop out. Not 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 a course, just you know, a weekly basis. So so look out for those and lots of fabulous more conversations coming up for the show. And of course, if you want to check out the courses that I'm running, go to um, the course page on my website. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Big love to all of you. Bye for now.